Welcome to the Gratitude Podcast on www.georgeandbenta.com, where you'll hear a new story each week that will inspire more gratitude in your own life. Our mission is to inspire 100,000 people to discover how to feel gratitude and live a happy life through the amazing life stories of our successful guests and their actionable tips. Hello to everybody out there who's uh, seeking uh, gratitude and watching the, the uh, gratitude just manifest uh, great things in their life. So yes, I did. Uh, I am a highly decorated Navy SEAL. And uh, about 10 years ago, I went through a, uh, a marriage uh, curriculum ran by Life Discoveries. And uh, I'm now a coach. Uh, now I'm a marriage coach and uh, using their uh, their tools. But about 10 years ago, I went through this program. And uh, I was very, very uh, focused on the things that I thought needed to be implemented in life. And so I was very demanding, very forceful, very like adamant, charismatic even about forcing people, forcing my, uh, my ex-wife now, my wife then to do the things that I wanted her to do, the things that I thought she should do. And uh, I was actually able to see her vision of how she felt the world should be in accordance with her and how she felt love. And I basically um, realized that I only showed her from the way she felt love, that she was actually loved less than five times in our marriage. Wow. And we had, we had been married eight years at that point in time. So it was very, very hum- humiliating, very humbling. Um, but it started me on a, a, a path of self reflection and discovery that obviously you, you arrive to, you got to have gratitude for everything in your life. This episode is supported by premium Jane with free shipping on all products. Premium Jane is dedicated to delivering the natural benefits of CBD to those who truly need it. Go to premiumjane.com and save 20% with coupon code GRATITUDE. Gratitude for everything in your life. Yeah, I, I'm sure that it, it wasn't a, an easy period in your life. And uh, I, I really admire the way you got to see uh, the situation and the, uh, the humbleness and um, the, the power. This is, this is how I see uh, a strong person. I mean having the power to be vulnerable to be um to be sincere with himself and with uh, his feelings that, that might be in my opinion at least harder than to, to look strong in front of other people well there's a it's kind of a, a, a trick to the thing gregarian is like a in the bible there's a verse that says hey treat un, tr- do unto others as you would like to have done unto you it's the golden rule and uh It's really, really, like you just said, hey, you got to be true to your feelings. And I tell you, I was being very, very true to my feelings. This is exactly what I felt she should be doing. This is exactly how I felt everybody in the world should like see, uh, see the universe, see, see earth, see the planet. This is how the way things should go in accordance with, yeah, me, Derek, arrogant asshole, like Derek, I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you how you need to think and who you need to be. And then. Um, uh, but it was, I was being very, very authentic. I thought to me, but really it was my you know, ego mind. And, and I'm just like, okay, Hey, I want to be better than everybody. I don't want to feel the terrible things that I feel when people don't treat me the way I want them to treat me or my mm-hmm. ex-wife or my wife then treats me the way that she's treating me. I don't want to feel these things. And so I'm going to force you to change so I feel better. Like it's yeah. your responsibility to to make me feel good or something. Hmm. Very interesting, and I think it's amazing that you you got to see her perspective in time. And this is um, as I as I know some people they uh, go through this uh, a whole lifetime, and they don't. We're, we're, get, we're kind of chopping up here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can We're still kind of hear like you. losing a connection here. Yeah, I I, I can hear you. It's all right. Uh, the video isn't uh, 
working anymore, but I can still hear you. All right, we, we seem to be back. Okay, we're back. Perfect. All right, so uh, we will get into it before we lose the connection again. <laughs> Um, and I want to ask you, what is your uh, favorite quote, favorite words of wisdom on gratitude and why? My favorite uh, quote is uh, by Ronald Reagan. It is, there's no limit to what a man can do as long as he doesn't mind who gets the credit for it. So the reason that this is my favorite quote on gratitude is because it allows a person to just kind of step back assess the situation and maybe understand that they're dealing with a child or they're dealing with a man or woman who is just like gagging for respect and gagging for value on the planet. And if you are already sitting in a place where you value yourself, if you've already decided that you're going to love yourself and forgive yourself and accept yourself, and you know that the person across from you is just gagging for affection of some sort of acknowledgement that their that their presence on this planet is valuable well then uh, i watched a, a a a scene once where this little kid he comes out on stage and and he starts playing the piano and he's playing like chopsticks or something like that and this master musician comes out and he starts playing the piano behind him like just like kind of behind him sitting behind him and over his shoulders and so he just the kid is doing his thing, right? But he's a child. And then this master musician comes out there and the kid is just like, you know, applauded, you know, because he's out there brave enough to just like do his thing in front of everybody. And, 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 uh, I don't know, just be willing to accept praise or condemnation or whatever. But, um, when, when somebody, um, gives the acknowledgement to their presence on the planet without having to, to get importance for themselves and gives it to somebody else. It's just really powerful gratitude. Um, poem or not poem, but quote for me from, from Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think also that uh, one of the most important things that we seek in our, in our lives is appreciation. We want to be to feel appreciated by our uh, partner. We want to be appreciated for our work. We want to be appreciated for who we are, and this is one of the the main things that we we want out of life and we want in life. Sure. And if you uh, if you are somebody who is wanting appreciation then you know, like uh, Gandhi says, be the change that you want to see in the world. So if you start appreciating you, if you start appreciating other people, well, then the whole laws of the universe, then they just come back and, and uh, the world appreciates you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and it's, it's really interesting to, to see that these, these things are, um, are general. I mean, um theoretically like uh being a navy seal you are like uh the alpha male the the strongest uh man on <laughs> on the face of earth somehow and um i think in in general people think that if you are if you are that and you you've been through those experiences everything everything comes natural like uh you know how to handle a marriage you know how to handle uh, a relationship and everything has to be perfect because you you got to that level professionally let's say sure and uh, i think that we we need to learn each part of life we we need to learn and to experience it and to see to get better in in that part because we well, have here's a, thought, yeah well here's a uh sorry i interrupted you there no Do problem you anything else no 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 yeah so um, it's funny that you say, you know, here's this Navy SEAL that you're talking to and he's got, he's going to be able to figure everything out. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about, man, I wonder what like you wake up to and like think about gratitude every day because I just hid behind achievement. 
like I did not want to feel like how pathetic and worthless I felt when, when I was in a relationship. I just, I didn't know how to be in one. I didn't know how to be a good, I didn't know how to be a good person, much less a good husband or father or provider or anything. I had no idea. And, uh, I mean, I could tell you why all of those things happened, but, uh, the bottom line was I didn't know how to, how to be that. And I wanted to avoid feeling like a, a useless, um, I'm trying to think of a word that means like just completely oblivious, right? I'm completely Mm -hmm. oblivious to my own feelings, much less the feelings of other people. And so I'm going to go and become a, a, a great swimmer. I'm going to become a great athlete. I'm going to become a Navy SEAL. And now I, I have the respect of the world, Gregorian, and I don't, I don't have to ask for it at all just because I'm a Navy SEAL. But um, if, I, if I'm telling you, like, I felt like a pathetic, a pathetic human being. I felt like a pathetic man. And didn't even know why I was like walking around on the planet because I didn't deserve. I didn't felt that, feel I deserved it because I had no self-love. I was seeking it from everybody except inside of me. So if you think that I'm a good man, then I feel good for the day. And then I talk to somebody, you know, down the road, uh, maybe, maybe I cut them off in traffic or something and they hate me. Right. And I'm like, no, I'm not that guy. Like I want to be, I need you to say that I am a good person. I need you to say that I have value and uh, that's kind of, that's embarrassing. You know, that's just like um, everybody on this planet has amazing worth. And, uh, but believing that is a totally different, (laughs) is it so actually accepting that you feel worthless as worthless as you feel and allowing yourself to do it. That's uh that's where the, that's where I found the magic was. Yeah. But I did want to, I did want to ask you what, what you woke up to and think, thought about like gratitude wise on a, on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to, to have a practice. Like, uh, when I wake up in the morning, I, uh, I have a kind of, uh, exercise to find seven reasons to, to be grateful about like really fast, like, okay. What what can I uh, find right now? Because uh, as early as we get up in the morning, we start thinking about stuff and residual thoughts keep coming up and you keep thinking the same things. And if you do this exercise, it's really beautiful that you can uh, start the day and to uh, move things forward in, in, uh, in gratitude and in things that you really appreciate in, in your life. And um, what I also wanted to add about uh, what you were saying is the fact that uh, I felt something uh, similar to what you felt like um, I've been trained and I've been training myself for, for the role of, uh, I don't know, a business person. I, I uh, graduated business school and um, most of my time, uh, most of my training, my formal training was in this direction. And uh, we are not uh, usually trained for the role of uh, a good father or a good husband or a good lover. And uh, we think like, okay, if we are good in, in a career and we are earning money, that should be enough somehow. And uh, it was a shock for me because I thought, okay, I'm, I'm a man, I need to do these things. And the other things should be normal, should be... I should not worry about them. Somebody should appreciate me for doing these things and make me the the pain that I have. When people get married, Gregorian, they want the other person in the relationship to take their pain away. <laughs> and uh, so typically what happens is uh, a couple will be married for however long and one person in the relationship is happier than the other. But the other person who's not happy, they or the other the person who's happy they don't understand why the other person is leaving because they're actually not you know, flipping the golden rule around, which is doing unto others as they would like to have done unto them because they're oblivious that their, their needs are being met. Their needs are being like taken care of. And they have no idea that they're, uh, that they're crucifying 
the uh, the person that they actually really do love. <laughs> yeah, I found that um, being able to communicate these things in a couple, in a marriage, I, I'm not married, but I, all I can speak about from experience is from a couple perspective, yeah. um, being able to speak about these things and um, to really uh, try to see the world from his, from uh, your partner's shoes. Yeah. It is really amazing. And it's my mind blowing to see how they might feel in a certain situation that you sure. do think about. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know much more about this than I do. No, I mean, you, we're all people, man. We, we know that when, uh, when something is done for us, that equals love for us we appreciate it a lot and uh when there's a uh, uh when we do something for somebody else and they appreciate the the sentiment the understanding of their of their heart yeah they are love they feel loved exactly exactly and um what was uh my question for you uh if you i know that you're uh you're using uh gratitude and one one of the things that are important in a marriage is appreciation for for the other person um what do you do usually when when it's hard to be grateful <laughs> so it's it's funny you're asking that question i was i was literally thinking about it All right before we we got on the call and uh so the easiest thing to do is to go things that you're actually grateful for and you can arrive to being grateful for for them and even in their even in their hardest prickly moments uh eventually but it's uh the process that i use is okay this situation is happening right now i'm really upset and i'm going to think about something general think about you know there's a blanket of snow on the ground right now i'm living in denver colorado and i just moved from hawaii and i haven't seen snow in a long time i'm just like grateful that there's like just snow everywhere and, and i'm just laying in my bed and thinking about all right how nice the how nice it feels to be warm and right? just how nice it is to be inside right yeah, exactly. and a lot of been a lot of times outside and just like miserable. And so um, at some point though, you have enough moments where you feeling good enough, you know, maybe a, a butterfly came by a, a bumblebee or a, a flower or whatever. You just stopped and you just like recognize that moment and had gratitude for it. And you have such momentum that an opportunity comes up to deal with the thing that you didn't like. And then you look at the thing that is happening in your life that you don't, that you don't like, and you acknowledge that you are the one who actually brought it into your life. That person is not like bringing that into your life. You brought it into your life. Hmm. And once you own that, and then you forgive yourself hmm. and you look at yourself. So my, my girlfriend, her son, um, they had, some fallings out and uh, she got some advice from a woman who said, Hey, you need to, to not, you need to, but she recommended looking at her son with just sheer adoration, <laughs> regardless, regardless of what she was doing. And so if you can do that for yourself and just like, Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate that you are on this planet and you're talking to yourself. Yeah, I appreciate yeah that you got that angry about that situation and you drew even more situations that drew even more anger into your life. And you just say, you know what, at least you're here on this planet, right? It's you playing chopsticks on the piano, right? And even though you have the entire universe that's just like behind you, loving you and saying, Hey, I want you to like be amazing. And I'm going to you know, come up behind you and play the, the piano behind you while you're playing chopsticks but at least you're out there playing chopsticks and we are here like supporting you, whether you're angry, whether you are like completely loving of a situation that made you furious, right? You, you, you won, you, you 
You were able to have love when uh, most people wouldn't. Uh, my favorite story about that is uh, by uh, Victor Frankel. He's the yeah. author of, yeah, he's the author of, uh, of uh, what's A it? Man's Search for Meaning. A Man's Search for Meaning, right. And so, you know, Victor Frankel, he's like the people who succeeded most in the Holocaust were people who decided that they were going to love regardless of what was happening. So if, if the uh, Germans were murdering the people that they loved most, they decided that they were people too and that they deserved to be loved. And those, those uh, Jews who were able to do that, those people who were, who were Holocaust survivors or that were able to do that, like love would acted as a shield for them mm -hmm. because it just, um, we feel better when we love somebody instead of like hating them for whatever they're doing to us. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you mentioned something that's, that's really powerful and we, we tend to forget, especially men, um, appreciating yourself and loving yourself and being compassionate with yourself. We usually, as men, we are taught to be strong and to be hard with ourselves and we have to uh, overcome any obstacles and we have to be tough and this thing with being uh, compassionate and being loving to ourselves is something that's very foreign usually. And yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a, uh, as you sit there and experience feelings that you experience situations that give you feelings that you don't want to feel having a, uh, having people that you can actually sit, having other men that you can sit face to face with and just like, say, all right, this is, this is how I feel. This is how pathetic I feel. This is how, how, uh, weak I feel. And I feel like just running away and like just becoming a hermit someplace and just like not being on this freaking planet anymore in this capacity because it's just too much. And having other guys go remember their own life experiences and how pathetic and weak they felt they feel. And they're like, okay, yeah, I, I actually acknowledge feeling like that too. And I'm, they appreciate you for like being willing to tell you how freaking pathetic you feel in the moment. Because mm -hmm. it allows, it allows them to do the same thing. And they're like, okay, this is the man that I actually want to be. So, um, but I'm going to let myself and forgive myself for, for crucifying myself or for, for hating how weak I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, the thing is also, I don't know how your experience was, but uh, for me, it was um, these kind of feelings and uh, things like these were mocked uh, between guys. Like if you talk about this kind of stuff, it's like, the reaction usually is to to make fun of you and to even if they i know that they they have the same kind of uh, uh feelings and the like same kind of situations uh but uh, they usually uh fight them off by uh by making a mockery out of the other person and by making fun i don't know if you had this kind of experience well if uh i think when you have a situation in your life where you've lost the people that you love most, where you're not hanging, you're not able to like even have conversations with your children because you were so uh, needy and so um, mandating on other people that they treat you a certain way or that they, that they accept you. Um, when you actually have gone through your own Holocaust and you can just say, Hey, here's what, Here's what I'm going through. Here's the situation in my life. And um, I'm going to, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to quit on it. For some reason, like I was put here on this planet for a purpose. And I want to see what it, I want to see what it's all about. You know, if, it, if this planet's going to take me out, then, then let it take me out. But when you talk to people about the losses that you incurred and how your, your father treated you, how your mother treated you, how that 
transformed and, and, and uh, manifested in your own life and your own relationships and marriages and your, your relationships with your kids. And you see like everything that you hated about your parents in yourself. Oh, and, yeah. you, <laughs> and then you see your kids acting the same way. And you're like, I don't, I can't do anything about this. And I, and I feel worthless and pathetic. And, uh, what I was, what I was kind of trying to say there is, is, uh, I guess when you, when you were talking about other people, like being, um, judgmental about expressing those things, the chances are almost, you know, a thousand percent gregarian that you have those same feelings about yourself. Mm. Meaning if you, if they're condemning you for um, sharing those feelings and you, and it affects you and it upsets you, the chances are like literally a thousand percent that you judge yourself for feeling for, for uh, the things that they're accusing you of. You actually, you actually think somewhere deep inside of you, you think the same thing. Hmm. <laughs> That that's a really good one, and uh, yeah, it's it's great that you to reach this level of taking responsibility. It, it's really not easy to to take on this this kind of responsibility and say, okay, if I'm feeling something like this, it may be something that's in in me also <laughs> from other people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's a it's a Byron Katie's book, "Loving What Is." Uh, mm -hmm. Hugh Len, Hugh Len, he heals an entirely mentally, criminally mentally ex insane psychiatric unit with uh, the book Zero Limits, right from 1984 to 1987. He is like, hey, I'm responsible for uh, the way, the reason that these people are the way they are. I'm going to clean up me. He didn't, he doesn't see one patient for three years, and they shut the, they literally shut the unit down. Mm -hmm. It's such a fun place to work at. Yeah, so I'm 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 very brutal about this whole mirror concept, and I just uh, I uh, I attempt to explain it to other people, and at some point people are like, "Well, but what about that one thing over there?" And no, even that one thing over there, like it's you, and uh, actually, if you can't see it, I'm not going to get angry at you for not seeing it. It's me. Hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and there are things that are really, and it's really easy, to, especially uh, in a relationship to, to say, okay, um, the other person did that to me and uh, uh, I'm, I have all the rights in the world to, all the, yeah, to, to be upset or to be angry or to do something that's not okay. And, taking responsibility this way is not easy to do at least not all of the time um yeah, especially when you're living your own holocaust right somebody's, yeah. <clears throat> if somebody's hurting you or your family and you have the ability to like remove yourself from that situation for sure do that but those people like ended up in a situation where they couldn't and so the only thing that they could do was okay, I need to find love in this situation right now. I want to feel better because this is, this is hell. And I'm guaranteed people who are listening to this are having those situations. They're just like, I can't go because of whatever reasons that they're, that they're sitting in their, in their situations. And I need the money. I need the, the connection with this person, whatever. Mm -hmm. Fine. I'm going to love me enough to find other things to love, to find even things about the, the, the other person, even if they're, even if they're the devil incarnate, like they're Satan himself, right? If you're able to look at them and say, you know what? Um, I like their eyes. I like their hair, right? Something that you can believe and just appreciate about the person just starts turning that, that corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there is a, a part of the brain, I think, that uh, 
For instance, when we want to buy a car or we actually buy a car, we tend to see that car everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it it's the same here. If we focus on uh, the the things that we we appreciate in the other person, we tend to see them more because our brain is wired in that way that we can we get to um, see this again and again and see it like the car that we we want or we already bought. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, the analogy I think you're using is. If we're appreciating, you know, somebody for their hair, well, then the next time that we see them, maybe they have a smile on their face because they can feel that energy coming from you towards them. That's appreciation that they're gagging for, and they don't deserve it in any of their actions. But you get your you're offering that love because you know love is eternal. There's not like a, a a bottle, a bottom of you, right? You can just express it, and regardless of how they're acting in the moment you're thinking about something else that they're not doing that you actually genuinely appreciate and they, they appreciate it and they, they, they can't help, but um, express that and give you something else to appreciate. Hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, wanted to ask you if you could go back in time, um, what would you tell your younger self about gratitude? Uh, Gregorian, I go back in time all the time <laughs> and you can, and we can all do it literally right now. All of us can think about moments in our life when we saw our parents, uh, not giving us the affection or the things that we needed or us doing something that, you know, we were sorry for, right? We can literally go to that moment in time. We can time travel all of us right now and go back and say, all right, I was doing that at that moment. And we can stand, you know, kind of afar and look at that kid, right? Look at our parents and say, you know what, just for being on this planet, just for your your, uh, willingness to come down to earth and like face the learning planet and do whatever you needed to do here, like I love you and I accept you. The entire shit show that might be happening right now, like, Just like wrap your arms around it and just like, I love you. Like, thank you so much for um, happening because it happened to help you become who you are right now and just like be grateful for that moment. So I time travel all the time. I do that all the time. I'm doing it right now. (laughs) Yeah, that's really, really powerful. Um, And it's, it's a really interesting way of, of seeing things and yeah, it's it's not a co- coincidence that we are here right now on this planet and that uh, we are living right here right now and that possibly I don't know maybe someone is inspired by who we are and what by what we stand for or God knows only <laughs> what uh, mission we have and what's uh, our purpose in the greater scheme of things. Yeah, we're literally we're becoming. Yeah, exactly. Or we're, so, we're, or we're returning to what we what we were. I think something that uh, that I heard the other day, Gregorian, was really profound. It's like we look at God as a all knowing, all uh, understanding, omniscient, uh, omnipotent like being, not needing to experience or not wanting to experience anything new. And I heard something really uh, profound the other day. I was listening to uh, Abraham Hicks. Um, and Abraham basically was saying, "You, they want expansion. I don't know if your listeners understand who know who Abraham Hicks is, but most probably. Yeah. Basically, Esther Hicks is, uh, is translating for this, uh, this infinite intelligence an infinite intelligence that calls itself Abraham through her. And uh, they're saying, we want to expand. And in order to have expansion, you have to have contrast. And so when we are in these moments that we don't like, um, if we are able to like look at it through the eyes of a infinite intelligence that, 
want to have expansion and then it's not possible for the expansion to manifest without the contrast well then the, the contrast becomes something that you can have like oh what am i supposed to learn in this what what is my higher being what is god wanting to experience because i'm going through this um thing that i don't like well maybe i can like it what is there what is there to like about this this thing that i'm dealing with because uh it's going to act as a launch pad to a desire a deep desire that i have and so i'm going to I'm going to use it as that springboard and, and, and uh, be in alignment with my higher self. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's some really uh, interesting uh, perspectives on how we see the, the things that are challenging us and the, the things that seem to be not to be working the way that uh, we would love them to, to work. But, they have a purpose also like like we do yeah um, do you have some uh, people in your life that you are grateful for sure well, i'm grateful for everybody who has been in my life and uh i'm specifically grateful for uh, uh my girlfriend uh, terry lynn right now she actually has a uh a uh her own business. She's a, a coach for people who have been betrayed and cheated on. And uh, when I met her, she, she actually was able to see through my book, uh, things that I didn't even see about myself, wow. the things that I refused to feel about myself. And so here's this Navy SEAL. He becomes aware of other people's feelings, but uh, I wasn't able to feel any of my own feelings at all. And she called me on the carpet and was like, no, there's some stuff that's going on. And there was still enough pain in my life. I, I just understood and knew what she was. She was talking truth. And so, yeah, I just, I really appreciate her for being able to see through still the facade after 10 years of working on uh, you know, a destroyed marriage and what the heck happened and why can't I like, Why can't anything beautiful manifest out of this thing except for I can talk to other people about their relationships and, and fix their relationships because they can feel my pain and know I'm not judging them. Exactly. Exactly. If, for instance, your, uh, your experience brought, brought compassion and the capacity to, to understand other people that are in similar situations and to be able to love them, to be able to guide them. And you wouldn't have been able to do that if you haven't had that that kind of experience. It, it would be like you hit it perfectly. You just said it perfectly. If I didn't, if I didn't have any of these things, I wouldn't be able to have a conversation with anybody about the things that they're doing in their relationship. That's really funny. I'm a Navy SEAL and a retired Navy SEAL and, <laughs> and talking to people about. No, no, no. Your your relationship is is up is all jacked up. Not because she's she's doing anything that's uh, upsetting, or because you're doing anything upsetting, but because here's where here's where it manifested from, and here's what you're trying to get her to do. You're just trying to run from your own your own junk. Yeah, exactly. And men have a tendency to do that, especially in their work, in their, in their careers, and. To, to run away from the, the feelings and uh, that's why it's beautiful when you love someone and you want to really want to be with that person that you you can't es escape this like you have to face the feelings and you have to overcome them and to see through them and uh, even if it's really really hard sometimes it's you grow a lot yeah I agree And uh, I, I'm sure you you have a lot of experience yourself and with uh, the people that you work with um, about this. And uh, by the way, can you tell us a bit about your book? Oh, sure. So uh, I wrote the book, A Seal to Heal Your Marriage. Uh, it's, it's really an operational guide. Like it is written like specifically 
for men, just like you know, all the, the video games out there that are just like hardwired for guys to just like, okay, we're going to go out and plan this mission. We're going to go accomplish this mission action oriented. And so, you know, we're sitting here talking about feelings, right? But I wrote this book for a guy who's just like, look, what is going on? And I wrote it from a, a position of an operational mission planning, like at the very highest levels. This is how a Navy SEAL like conducts a, a military operation. And um, it, is, it is designed for a man to go and find out what his spouse is, uh, how, how they are wired. It's written for him to understand how he is wired. It is written for him to uh, develop a plan of action based on understanding how he screwed up everything. How he just like, he just blew it. And he didn't understand how she was wired to, and, and the things that she um, was not wired to get right in the relationship. And so she has her own failings and, and things that she did that she didn't mean to do. Right. But you actually brought it into your life to, to show you something. Anyway, it's written very much in that light um, as dedicated as an apology to my ex-wife and children. Uh, and I wrote it just because uh, there are people who genuinely uh, adore each other and love each other. And uh, they just can't understand why it's just not working. Why happily ever is after isn't working. How come their partner isn't taking away their pain? <laughs> if you, if you take away your own pain, and it gives them the, the opportunity to take away their pain. Um, a marriage can be truly, truly fulfilling. Um, I always like saying, you know, over 90% of the time, a divorce is not necessary. However, there are no points for being married and miserable. That's true. Yeah. And I know that you are, uh, um, um, a very big believer in re responsibility and especially in the fact that the man should have the responsibility and I wanted to ask you about uh, how you how you see this and uh, um, I'm just curious as a man like uh, isn't this like in a relationship uh, something like 50-50 or uh, we are totally responsible for our relationship Either we are a man or a woman. All right. So I was uh, speaking with a rabbi a few years ago and he said, okay, Derek, so you have this uh, thing that is upsetting you. And he's like, for a man, the way that men are wired, like we're very compartmentalized. Um, if we have something that is bothering us and the, the weight of it is like the weight of a small pebble. Um, if we bring that issue up, to our spouse and we want them to take our pain away. Right. Uh, to them, to a woman, because the way that a woman is wired, she feels the weight of that pebble. Like it's a boulder. I mean, that's, it's just massive. She cannot endure that weight. And so, um, when a man decides, Hey, I'm going to take responsibility for this. I'm going to take that boulder off of you. I'm going to take the, the rock off of me. That's really the definition of responsibility. Like, Hey, I'm a hundred percent responsible for this uh, shit show happening, whatever the heck happened. Right. I'm a hundred percent responsible for this. And when that man looks at himself and says, Derek, I forgive you for um, crucifying yourself for doing that thing that hurt you and hurt the people in your life that you love. Like, I love you. I forgive you. I'm sorry, right, for crucifying yourself. So that's a, a definition of responsibility that I heard not too long ago. Mm -hmm. It was responsibility is taking the burden off of other people for uh, not making your life great and taking the burden off of yourself for not making your life great. So um, yeah, I think that you can, you can see kind of look on your face is like relief. I don't know if people are watching the podcast, if they're able to be able to see your face, but uh, your, yeah. look, your the look on your face is like, oh, I get, I, I get it. Like I, I really appreciate it. If somebody took the weight off of me, right. 
Yeah, and exactly. then I took it off of myself. So you, you just feel the release happen, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, having this uh, responsibility, for instance, uh, I, I think of myself as being a responsible person and I, I usually take responsibility for my actions, my words, my what I do. Um, but sometimes, like you said, this part uh, was missing inside of me and it's it's really beautiful that you brought it up. Um, what do you do afterwards when you take all the responsibility and you're burdened by it, when you, are, you have all kinds of uh, pressures um, on yourself? And yeah, this, is a, this is a great tip and I think uh, our audience will, will appreciate it and will will use it also. I, I surely will. <laughs> yeah. You can just see, like, just go through your, go through your yesterday. Right. And just like, okay, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. Beat myself up for that, this or that, or the other thing. I did this over thing over here. And I think people, that message is really getting out that, uh, you know, we get to create our own, our own universes, right. We get to create the life that we, that we want. And, uh, and we are understanding, I think, as a collective, is that um, it's other. It's not other people's responsibility to give us the feelings that we want to to have, the life experience that we want to have, and uh, that seemed to be like you know an additional, just really a, a huge gift from the universe to be able to look at myself and say, "Fine, I'm a Gregorian. I'm great at saying sorry for what I did, right?" But if I continue to do the same thing, whether it's to myself, right. Especially to other people. If I do it to other people, then really shame on me. But if I'm crucifying myself, right. I'm, I'm uh, sitting there just grateful for everything. Right. But I'm at the bottom of the ocean chained to it. Right. And just like looking up at the sun, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And swimming for 10 years. Right. But not getting anywhere because I wasn't uh, willing to face things that were, you know, at the bottom of the ocean, the reason that I was like chained down, down there. And, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think, feel like we kind of like got uh, that, that derailed us a little bit, but, uh, no, I, uh, I think, it, I think it's, it's really good because, uh, by, by taking responsibilities, we, we tend to take burdens on ourselves also. And even though we, uh, we get, to a point where, where it's harder to be grateful uh, when we have all those things that are burdening us. And uh, when we don't have the, the necessary compassion to see ourselves and to, uh, to love ourselves and to accept ourselves, and we, we tend to, to be worked up about the responsibilities and forget about actually being grateful and enjoying uh, yeah. the other person for instance i think I, I don't have the experience maybe you, you know i think it's something like this with uh, with children like um they are amazing uh beings but when you take the burden the, the responsibility for them uh instead of having a, a feeling of gratitude most of the time you might feel the pressure of being a parent and having all the responsibilities that are related to them i don't know if you relate to this Sure, of course. Yeah, and I think this this might be a really good tip for, for our audience. Yeah, I, I think like basically what you're you're saying, you're like, hey, you picture like parents like getting frustrated with their with their children, and uh, instead taking a step back and like, you know what? Why am I mad? Well, I'm mad because I don't want them to have the same. I don't want them to to face the same uh, woes in life that I faced. And I'm going to, to make them make decisions where they don't have to, to face the feelings that I'm facing or that I refuse to face. And so you get frustrated at them and angry. And so taking that step back and taking that burden off of them to like not carry your, bur your burden right? yeah, exactly. and, then forgive, and then forgive yourself for doing that to them. Exactly. Like that. Uh, what's really interesting uh, having this conversation that um, I remembered that um, way that I'm uh, loving my my girlfriend is uh, how I have been loved by by my folks and 
uh, they usually tend, for instance, to um, uh, neglect themselves in order to uh, to offer. So th this is what they did when I was a child. They used to neglect neglect themselves if, uh, to offer me, for instance, they, they gave me the best food. Uh, if something, I don't know, got burned, they were eating the, the burned food and they gave me the, the one that was perfect. And I tend to do the same and, and it's really interesting. And um, yeah, I, I didn't have that example. And I think for parents to be a good example is also important to not neglect themselves and to be uh, compassionate to themselves because this is how we work. We, we copy, we we learn by what people do, what our parents do, not what they say. Because they can say that, hey, but with a cigarette in their mouth, they can say, quit smoking. It's, you, you shouldn't smoke. It's not healthy for you, but you are doing it. <laughs> sure. sure. That's what we're doing all the time. Like, hey, don't treat people kindly. Like if you see somebody in the store and they're being a jerk to somebody, I have a, a friend who gets really, really like almost like violently ang angry if he sees like an injustice happening to somebody else. And I've like, you know, constantly I just talked to him for years and just like you're angry at that and every time you do it like you bring more of that into your life you bring like the thing that you want most is to have fairness and equality except for you looking at the person over there right it's always over there right yeah, there's, one thing, there's, there's one thing that Hugh Len says I want you to notice something about every situation that you arrive in that you don't appreciate what's the constant that's there the constant is always you you're the person who is always there and you have the ability to clean it up so if you're seeing an injustice that is happening then flip the whole scene around and say where am i uh treating somebody uh unfairly where am i where am i uh treating somebody who's treating somebody that uh, not not in a fair way how am i doing that to myself how am i not treating mm, yeah. myself fair yeah and uh, I'm just flipping that whole thing on a, around if you're feeling it if you if you have a visceral feeling uh, of against like hey it's not me at all this is this is totally um something else this is another person's problem this is another issue outside of myself but you're very upset about it it's in you Beyond any shadow of any doubt, you're not willing to face a feeling that it's there. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. And it's okay. It's okay. You can actually forgive yourself for not not being willing to face that. And I've had guys do that. I've had guys do that. Just like, hey, I'm unwilling to to uh, to to feel how worthless how worthless I feel. Yeah, this is a really good step because I I've heard uh, about this part of taking responsibility a lot in many uh, books and in many teachings. Um, but I, I haven't heard about, okay, what do you do after you take responsibility? And I think this is, this is amazing. And uh, it's something that completes the process. And without it, it it's just not, not okay. <laughs> All right. So, um wow. Even even that's even that's okay, Gregorian. Like if somebody's not willing to face the you know to face the mirror, it, even that is okay. Like hey, if they're if they're not in a place where they can they're willing to face those things, like even that is something that we can accept and just like yeah, I don't want to either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. It's not something easy to do. Um, we're getting near to the to the end of our uh, discussion today. Okay. And, um, I want to ask you where can our audience uh, find you, and uh, uh, how can you be of service? Okay, so uh, I have a website called A Seal to Heal Your Marriage. And uh, there's a, a process there. You can download a free first chapter of my book there. And then uh, it takes you to a, a, a road down to life discoveries. And there's an online curriculum there. Uh, basically, after, after that curriculum is finished, then we actually have an ability to like go through some coaching. Uh, there's just some 
there's some procedural stuff that has to be understood and that way we can actually all speak the same language. And plus, if somebody's really, really in a, in a, a situation, a relationship that's terrible, um, there's some people who just want to complain about the other person being them being in a terrible relationship. But if you're somebody who is willing to, uh, willing and ready to take responsibility, a hundred percent responsibility for your life, like, uh, this will be a life transforming, uh, situation. And, uh, if you genuinely love your, your partner, uh, you genuinely want to have a better experience on this, on this planet. Um, it's, it's really a phenomenal process. However, there's, there's a vetting process like, Hey, how much pain are you really, really in? Are you really ready to, uh, to commit <laughs> to being a hundred percent responsible for your life? So the website is a seal to heal your marriage.com. And, uh, there's some, there's a, uh, some tabs across the top for coaching and the free, yeah, free chapter and how to order the book and coaching and the whole process. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you so much for what you shared with us and for all the insights and your your life experience, Eric. It, it was amazing. Thank you. Hey, Gary, and thanks for your time today. You have a great day. Thank or, you. Yeah, have a, have, a, have a nice sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm get ready to start on my day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to our weekly podcast. Help us reach our goal of inspiring 100,000 people by sharing this podcast with your loved ones, with your Facebook friends. And if you loved this episode, please write a review on iTunes. Search for the Gratitude Podcast. By the way, what are you grateful for right now?